There has been a growing debate on whether the slavery reparation will be paid or not. It's because the idea has been made to sound so obscure that today, little do people believe that slavery reparation will ever be paid. But what if we say that in the United States, and on the high table, this topic is under discussion? Because the U.S. government has engaged in all kinds of financing, from wars to peace, and many more we cannot name here, there is an urgent need to pay slavery reparation. It becomes a moral duty the U.S. cannot escape anymore. What's more, the calculated reparation amount was $350,000 earlier. Now, this has been raised to $151 million per person. But the question is, who will pay this amount, given that there are about 14% black Americans? On top of that, will every African American get the reparation money? Watch this video because this is going to change how you think about slavery reparation. The Black History Archives when the descendants of former slaves living in the U.S. ask for reparations, they often face unfounded objections. Some argue that since they didn't directly experience slavery, there's no reason for compensation. Yet what about those who inherited enormous wealth and land from their white supremacist ancestors? If black Americans aren't entitled to reparations for the injustices faced by their ancestors, why are the descendants of white supremacists still benefiting from the riches amassed by slave owners? This highlights the flaws in the argument against reparations. Earlier, reports by various economists and State Departments suggested paying $360,000 to each African American. However, everybody knew that this was too meager. The U.S. wanted to get rid of the generation's long duty, yet by paying only a minor amount. Now, this amount has been raised to $151 million. For many, this amount is sufficient. But the question remains, who will pay the reparation money? Given that the total amount will reach trillions over trillions, understanding this is essential to know whether it's possible or not. Given that no government has access to such a substantial sum, various suggestions have emerged. One proposal involves utilizing the present-day wealth and land owned by the descendants of white supremacists. The fundamental argument is that the wealth amassed by white slave owners, built on the labor of enslaved African Americans, didn't simply vanish with the end of slavery. Instead, it has been passed down through generations, providing economic advantages to their descendants. This historical injustice has resulted in stark disparities in wealth, education, and opportunities between white and black Americans. Slavery, a deeply immoral institution that endured for centuries in the United States, inflicted immense suffering and trauma on those who were enslaved and their descendants. This injustice demands corrective action. Initially, it was suggested that the federal government assume the responsibility for reparations. The argument was that the federal government played a significant role in supporting slavery through federal law and constitutional protection. Therefore, establishing a dedicated reparations fund is crucial. If it's argued that the descendants of former slaves shouldn't receive reparations because they didn't endure the brutalities themselves, then the descendants of white supremacist slave owners shouldn't retain the wealth generated from slavery either. If this were to occur, this wealth would need to be confiscated. Who rightfully deserves this wealth? Legally and ethically, this wealth undeniably belongs to the descendants of slaves who continue to face structural and systemic racism. The financial repercussions of racism on black Americans have been profound, with estimated losses reaching a staggering $70 trillion, dating back to the era of slavery. This extensive cost is deeply intertwined with the historical wealth disparity. The average middle-class white family in the United States possessed $149,703 in accumulated wealth in 2016, while their black counterparts held only $13,024 amounting to a mere 8.6% of the wealth of white families. Sean Rochester, the author of The Black Tax, The Cost of Being Black in America, attributes this wealth gap to the enduring legacy of slavery. In his book, Rochester meticulously analyzes how racism and discrimination have inflicted trillions of dollars in economic losses on black Americans over multiple generations, resulting in a total of $70 trillion. 
This discrimination has contributed significantly to the considerable racial wealth disparity visible today. The origins of the wealth gap can be traced back to 250 years of unpaid labor endured by enslaved Africans. While quantifying the exact value of this slave labor is challenging. Estimates range from $24 to $97 trillion extracted from black slaves between 1619 and 1865. Rochester utilizes an average figure of $50 trillion in his calculations. Despite contributing their labor to build the nation, black Americans did not receive a share in this wealth, currently owning only about 2% of U.S. wealth. Throughout history, Black Americans were systematically excluded from government-sponsored wealth-building programs. For instance, in 1863, they were denied access to the Homestead Act, which granted 160 acres of land to citizens in exchange for a nominal fee and five years of land cultivation. Over 70 years, predominantly white homesteaders claimed 270 million acres, valued at $1.6 trillion. Additionally, Black Americans were excluded from the Social Security Act in 1935, resulting in a $143 billion loss, and the GI Bill in 1944, which denied benefits to black veterans, costing them an additional $45 billion. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community and we need your support. Let's continue now. Even when black Americans attempted to establish their businesses and wealth networks, progress was obstructed or destroyed, often through violent means. The 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, where a white mob burned down black-owned businesses in the prosperous Greenwood District of Tulsa, Oklahoma, serves as a tragic illustration. Such disruptions and the relegation of black people to low-paying jobs contributed to the persistent wealth gap. To arrive at the $70 trillion estimate, Rochester takes into account losses incurred during the Jim Crow and civil rights eras, underscoring that black Americans faced racial and economic segregation during this period, curtailing their participation in the American economy. Presently, the racial wealth gap is striking, with the typical white family possessing roughly 10 times more wealth than the average black family. Particularly, White college graduates have over seven times the wealth of their black counterparts. To truly actualize the American dream as an equitable reality, it becomes imperative for the U.S. government to rectify its historical wrongs by providing reparations to the descendants of black Americans. Reparations should take the form of individual cash payments tailored to narrow the racial wealth divide. Additionally, these reparations should encompass initiatives aimed at wealth building while addressing disparities in education, housing, and business ownership. In 1860, the estimated value of enslaved black Americans' labor surpassed a staggering $3 billion, surpassing the combined investments in factories and railroads. The cotton produced by enslaved individuals in 1861 alone was valued at $250 million. This considerable wealth generated through slavery not only enriched white slave owners but also propelled the nation's economy, all while stifling any opportunities for wealth accumulation among the enslaved. To this day, the descendants of enslaved black Americans have not received compensation for their labor, nor has the federal government made amends for the lost equity resulting from anti-black housing, transportation, and business policies. Historical injustices such as slavery, the era of Jim Crow segregation, and discriminatory practices like redlining have systematically deprived black Americans of opportunities to amass wealth. Simply advocating for individual effort and behavioral change cannot bridge the racial wealth gap, as evidenced by the fact that white high school dropouts possess more wealth than black college graduates. At times, reparations are dismissed as an impractical strategy. However, the history of reparations in the United States reveals that reparations are not unfamiliar to the nation. Native Americans have received land and significant financial compensation for various benefits and programs as restitution for their forced displacement from their ancestral lands. Japanese Americans received $1.5 billion in reparations for their internment during World War II. Furthermore, 
the U.S. government played a role in ensuring reparations for Holocaust survivors, including substantial investments over time through the Marshall Plan. While West Germany 